we're gonna get some updates on what's going on with Starlink. We have a quite a few new pieces of information, so I'm gonna try to connect the dots for you. First off, we're gonna get some information from Gwen Shotwell's interview. She confirmed initially the Starlink receivers, basically the satellite dishes that you see everybody posting pictures of, used to cost $3,000 to SpaceX. Then the price went down to $1,500. Now it's down to about $1,300. The big deal here is that SpaceX already announced that they're building a factory in Austin, Texas for consumer facing devices for the Starlink mission. Meaning all of the hardware that consumers touch, routers, Starlink dishes, will be built in Austin. Knowing Elon Musk companies speed at building new factories I'm sure this will come up in no time. And once this, once this comes up, Gwen Shotwell says that the cost of these Starlink receivers will be down in the hundreds of dollars. So currently SpaceX charges new customers $500 first down payment plus the $100 for the first month. So it essentially subsidizes the first six or seven months of a new customer's internet service just to make up the cost for the satellite dishes. By this time next year, that cost will be down to parity and SpaceX will be cash flow positive from day one of a new customer. This is a really big deal. This is part of the reason why they have been raising private funds specifically for Starlink, not just for SpaceX, but specifically for Starlink, so they can build that factory and finance the new customer's acquisition. As of right now, SpaceX will not be offering different pricing structures. Essentially $100 a month is what the price will be. My assumption here is that once the factory in Austin becomes operational, they lower down the cost of their hardware and they have more satellites in space, then Starlink will be offering different pricing structures. Their goal is to have one gigabits per user up and down. But of course, this is a lot for somebody who is just browsing Netflix. So they will be offering lower tier packages, maybe 50 bucks a month, maybe 60 bucks a month. That's really not important. What's important is they're going to start encroaching the territory of regular cable operators. They're going to start stealing customers from them, especially the dissatisfied customers. And it's really not hard to be dissatisfied with AT&T or Comcast companies that will gouge you with fees, rental agreements, contracts, and so on. So the speed at which Starlink goes after the regular cable internet providers will be seen as basically lightning speed because nobody else currently can go in the territory of AT&T, for example, in LA and start laying fiber. And then a year later, to, will be able to offer internet to all of AT&T's customers. It's just impossible. And they can't conceive of that as a competitive threat to be even in existence. However, by next year, pretty much unless you're in an area filled with skyscrapers, Starlink is more than likely going to be your best option for having internet at home. Fast, cheap, reliable, mm -hmm. with good customer service. Now, Gwen Shotwell essentially confirmed that the first stage of Starlink is 75% complete. She stated they need about 28 Starlink launches on Falcon 9 to get complete global coverage, about 1,600 satellites. Just last Wednesday, they launched mission number 23, which means they have five missions left to be completely global. That's including North and South Pole. Basically, every corner of Earth will have continuous coverage with Starlink. Once this is done, ships planes, boats, anybody who is constantly moving will have the best option for having internet anywhere on Earth. This, of course, is not the end game for SpaceX. In fact, this is Starlink 1.0. Gwen will also confirmed that Starlink 2.0 satellites are coming soon, meaning the first 1600 will be the first version of, uh, of uh, Starlink, then we're gonna keep on having more and better satellites launched by Falcon 9 or Starship 
which will then include the proposed laser communication between satellites. What this means is, if you want to have the fastest possible connection between large distances, for example, if you're playing a video game and the guy you're playing against is in China, it will be faster if both of you were connected to a Starlink system than if you were connected to a, a regular fiber optic terrestrial system. The lasers between satellites up in space, due to the properties of them being in vacuum, transmit information faster than fiber optic does under the sea. Combine that with a lower cost of internet, with a lower cost of upgrading the system continuously, Starlink will become a huge competitive threat to existing internet service providers worldwide, regardless of where you're located, whether you're located in China, Europe, Australia, Canada. Once SpaceX introduces the new pricing structures with the lowered cost of the satellite dishes, with the faster internet, specifically for gamers or video calls, where you have no delay, you have no echo or anything like that, it will become the number one choice for everyday people, for everyday people internet. It will also be the fastest growing service. Compare that with other services that have to lay fiber cables to reach new customers, where SpaceX can send satellites up on used spaceships over and over and over again, where they have vertically integrated the whole process from raw material to end product. Think about it. Satellites manufactured by SpaceX in Seattle. Rockets manufactured by SpaceX in Boca Chica, Texas. Satellite receiving dishes and routers and everything else required for the end customer manufactured by SpaceX in Austin, Texas. No other company has that. No other internet service provider has that. If you check your internet router right now, regardless of what company it is, I guarantee you that this company outsourced the manufacturing of that router to a different company, Motorola or someone else. It doesn't really matter. Which means Comcast is paying Motorola to manufacture their modems. What that also means is Motorola is working for profit. Profit that Comcast is not keeping. Therefore, it becomes more and more expensive for Comcast just on the front of manufacturing routers and receivers for their customers compared to SpaceX. We're not talking about the uh, fiber optics, we're not talking about the data centers or anything else. Now, talking about data centers, we're going into speculation mode on my part here. Microsoft announced that they have tested successfully servers underwater. And I, when I say underwater, I don't mean in the ocean, but in literal bathtubs, where they have a solution that is not exactly like water, but a solution that boils at 50, 50 degrees Celsius, which then evaporates, turns back into the same solution, goes back, and it creates a closed loop for cooling servers. And what they discovered is that they have a much smaller failure rate than servers cooled for traditional air cooling. You would think like, what does this have to do with Starlink? Well, let me tell you, when you create a server that can work under water, you essentially create three different attributes required for servers to be completely operable in space. First off is you reducing size. Reducing size means it's easier to fit onto rockets and to be sent up in space. Number two, you're reducing energy requirements. Cooling servers is the highest energy consuming cost to running a data center. Number three, when you make a server work under water, you make it watertight. By definition, when you make something watertight, it's also airtight and it's also vacuum tight. Meaning with very little modification, those servers are basically purpose built to be sent up in space. Now, a whole bunch of companies in the past have proven that having servers in space is the most economical way for having servers and data centers. First off, their energy is free. They're powered by solar panels. Number two, 
they, ha they will have much lower failure rate due to lack of moving parts and due to the fact that they don't have to be cooled. Due to the fact that you remove so many moving parts, the data centers would be much more reliable and much cheaper to manufacture. So the only problem until now is the cost of sending servers to space. Well, SpaceX is working really hard on bringing that cost down. They're moving quite quickly with the Starship program. They're already at serial number 15. And that serial number in particular, according to Elon Musk, has over 100 upgrades compared to the previous three Starships that flew up to 10 kilometers in, in the air. And some of them landed, some of them didn't land, some of them exploded on impact, some of them exploded even before impact. But the thing is, SpaceX is moving so quick that, according to Shotwell again, she would be betting, if she was a betting person, that Starship would be reaching orbit by the end of this year. And what is the best cargo for a Starship? It is estimated to be able to send up to 400 Starlink satellites at a time, and that's version 1.0. We don't know if 2.0 might be smaller or more efficient, so it could be even more than 400. And on top of that, it has such a huge cargo bay that you can start essentially sending data centers up in space. Now, I know this sounds far-fetched, but remember one other tidbit. Microsoft and Starlink signed a deal for Starlink's service to be connected to Microsoft data centers and cloud. Also, think about this. Who is the person that Elon Musk dislikes the most? Jeff Bezos. Microsoft and Amazon are huge competitors in cloud computing, in data centers, and a whole bunch of other fields. And they're definitely not competitors between with Tesla or SpaceX at all. They're, they work together, they both dislike Amazon, and they both have a financial incentive to make this a success. Because if data centers go up in space, SpaceX will have by far the fastest and cheapest internet, Microsoft will have the fastest and cheapest data centers and cloud services, and Amazon and Jeff, Be and Jeff Bezos will be really, really sad. And this will make Elon Musk really, really happy. So, to recap, Starlink is going to be getting better, cheaper, faster, and with a possible partnership with Microsoft, they will be creating a huge mode where even other space-based internet satellite constellations will not have a competitive edge over SpaceX regardless of what they do. Well, I hope I connected some dots for you. My name is Nasco. This is The Great Reset. Have a great day.